Thanks, Matt. Defendant Peter Mesco pleaded not guilty to a first-degree rape charge at Ithaca City Court Friday morning. Mesco is currently free on a $5,000 cash bail. Now the wider pedestrian sidewalks and the Clinton Street construction behind me won't be fully completed until July 15th. Peter claims that the SPCA of Tompkins County's open admission no-kill policy doesn't prevent animals from dying. Now the four-story, 106-room hotel will probably go somewhere back there right next to Mano Steiner. Adore the crop hunger walk has been going on here in Ithaca for 29 years. This is the first time it's being held here in Cass Park. Judge Ramsey will come to a decision on the Anschultz versus Dryden case in about 60 days. I'm standing approximately where the new circulation desk at the South Worth Library will be. Behind me are some offices of future library personnel. We've got a cat that needs to end. <laughs> but we're not taking it until like almost January. There's nothing we can do. That's what the SPC of Tompkins County told one man last November. An undercover PETA representative that tried to drop off a stray cat. Major outbreak right so now. We're not we're on lockdown cats. for weeks. PETA Senior Vice President Daphna Nakminovich says a disease outbreak doesn't mean the entire shelter should be shut down for six weeks. In animal shelters, disease outbreaks occur when there is overcrowding, poor sanitation, possibly a failure to provide veterinary care. Karen Nievas, when the veterinarians caught on camera, says that wasn't the case in Tompkins County. I had just taken in a large group of cats from a situation, a bad situation, and they brought along with them a virus that we don't normally see in our cat population. And unfortunately, because our cats aren't vaccinated against this virus and it's not something we normally see, it spread to all of our cats. This fella here is Hank, one of the 60 cats currently at the SPCA of Tompkins County. Executive Director Jim Boudreau says the facility can hold up to 250 cats. And contrary to what PETA says, overadmission isn't a problem. It had nothing to do with space at all. It really just, uh, it, our main concern was the health of any new animal coming in. The last thing we want to do is to accept a new animal, a healthy animal into the shelter who's then going to contract a disease, spend time in our infirmary, or, you know, need extensive medical treatment. The upper respiratory infection outbreak has since been controlled. In Ithaca, Unilu, Newswatch 16. It's the stories in Ithaca City Cemetery that brought Elizabeth Mount to the annual Halloween graveyard tour for the first time. I hadn't realized that looking at, at grave markers would tell me so much about the past of a whole area. Grave markers include the headstone of Daniel Jackson, a slave from Virginia who settled in Ithaca when he escaped on the Underground Railroad, or the graves of the Civil War to World War II soldiers and firefighters who lost their lives. This is the burial site and story of the Hedgy sisters, twin sisters who died in the mid-1800s when their mother poisoned them both with arsenic. These columns here are a Victorian-era design representing a life cut short. The cemetery really demonstrates over 200 years of, of changing practices of burials and gravestone art. It's an overlooked part of our city that people don't always get a chance to see. Historic Ithaca does a marvelous job with tours. They've really opened up all sorts of history of Ithaca that most of us can live here and never know about. Because of the success of the tour last year, bringing about 60 guests, Historic Ithaca decided to do two tours this year on Saturday and Sunday. In Ithaca, Yina Lou, Newswatch 16. Ithaca residents and Cornell professors were all witness to Boston Marathon bombings yesterday. Good evening, I'm Yina Lou. Now, an Ithaca man is charged with a DWI following a two-car crash on McLean Road Sunday morning. Police say 25-year-old Justin Wilco lost control of his car and hit another driver. Wilco was arraigned in Cortlandville Town Court yesterday and sent to Cortland County Jail. Now, the next time you call or text while driving, you could pay an even heftier fine. The New York State budget could increase texting and calling penalties to up to $400. Welcome back. A jail warden may soon see the other side of the jail cell. 41-year-old Robert Wilson of Greece in Monroe County pleaded guilty of having oral sex with one female inmate and groping six others. Wilson was jail supervisor during the time the women were inmates. He resigned from his post last fall. But the dogs won't be only running. The dogs will be required to rest at various checkpoints. Now, doesn't that sound much more appealing? <laughs>